Hey, what's up, Stock Compounders? Brad here. So today I want to talk about Monish Pabrai's free lunch portfolio. Kind of break it down for you guys. The way I'm going to do that, I'm going to kind of go through this Forbes article from the end of 2017 on the 15 stock free lunch portfolio. And then we're going to take a look at Monish Pabrai's blog, Chai with Pabrai, to see how the portfolio has done over the last couple of years since its inception. Um, so let's dive right into it. What is the 15 stock free lunch portfolio? Well, essentially what it is, it's three baskets of five stocks each year. So it's a, a mechanical approach where every year you're um, buying 15 stocks uh, equal weighted across your portfolio. And the three baskets are Uber Cannibals, so five stocks from Uber Cannibals, companies that are aggressively buying back their own stock. That's what Uber Cannibals are. Uh, shameless Cloners, and, and those are created by copying great value investors, great value stock pickers. Uh, and then the third basket is Spinoffs, a collection of five recent corporate castoffs. Uh, and of course, Spinoffs are covered fairly extensively in Joel Greenblatt's How to Be a Stock Market Genius. Uh, he lays out a number of reasons why, you know, you, you tend to be able to find bargains in the spin-off basket. Uh, inefficient pricing. So let's take a look at the case for, you know, why would someone follow? the free lunch portfolio, why would you invest in these three baskets? So in order to do that, we're going to look at some back-tested data um, from, 20, from 2000, year 2000 to year 2017. Uh, so you can see what the S&P 500 did in each of those years, and then the kind of annualized number for the S&P 500, five and a half percent approximately. Uh, and then if you backtest sort of this approach to picking spinoffs, uh, this approach to picking the cloners, copying the, the best value investors, uh, and then this approach to identifying the top Uber cannibals, companies buying back their own stock, uh, you can see what these approaches did over those 17 years. Uh, if we backtest that annual uh, rate of return for the spinoffs was 13.5%. Clones was about 16%. And Uber Cannibals uh, was 20%. And that gives us a combined sort of return of 17% per year for the free lunch portfolio, looking back over those 17 years. Uh, so that's, that's pretty impressive looking at the back test. Um, but of course, you know, past results aren't always indicative of future performance. So let's take a look at how the free lunch portfolio has actually done. Uh, before I do that, I just want to point out this one thing here. Um, so, right. He says here, of course, we should not fixate on such short-term performance. He was referring to the performance of each of these three baskets in uh, 2017, uh, where it, it's significant that each of them significantly outperformed the market. Uh, and he says, of course, we should not fixate on such short-term performance, but the 2017 performance at a minimum provides further evidence of the soundness of these strategies. So just keep this in mind. We're going to revisit that. So in terms of performance, uh, this is on Chai with Pabrai, Monish Pabrai's blog. Since inception, at the beginning of 2018, uh, on an annualized basis, the free lunch portfolio is up 0.01% while the S&P is up 12%. So that's basically the years 2018 and 2019. So, you know, that's a little concerning um, because this is actual data that we have, not, not just back-tested data. 
so slightly concerning. And of course, here he says the free lunch is only two years old, so we can't draw any meaningful conclusions about its long-term performance. These are the early days. Keep the faith. He says here, we don't recommend putting more than 10 to 20% of your nest egg into this strategy. We think it only makes sense if you can follow it for a decade, two decades, three decades, insert your own number of decades. Um, so it's, what's interesting to me is he says when it's, when it's underperforming, he says we can't draw any meaningful conclusions, which I agree with. Uh, but coming back here, he says, at minimum, you know, the outperformance for 2017 provides further evidence of the soundness of these strategies. That one's a little bit hard for me to swallow, okay? When he's saying this one-year performance, you know, provides some evidence of the soundness, and then you go here and you look at the two-year performance, where he says, oh, we can't draw any meaningful conclusions. So, you know, I'm a big fan of Monish Pabrai. I just want to point out that there may be a little bit of bias here, uh, which makes sense. I mean, when you come up with an investing approach, um, you've got skin in the game. You want it to perform. And so it's easy to kind of wear the lenses, wear the filters that justify uh, what's happening. So I just thought that was interesting. Um, and then I just want to go through, so there were actually some updates to uh, the methodology in 2020 for this free lunch portfolio. Uh, I think there's like eight or nine managers that Monish Pabrai clones uh, for the shameless cloning portion of the free lunch portfolio. Uh, Greenlight Capital is out and it's been replaced by Pershing Square. Uh, Bill Ackman's fund. Uh, and then spinoffs, there's been a little refinement with the spinoffs. We've tightened the price to sales ratio from a price to sales of less than three. Now it's got to be a price to sales ratio of less than two. Uh, change the credit rating requirement. Uh, if the spinoff experiences any credit rating downgrade since IPO, it's no longer eligible to be included in the free lunch portfolio. Uh, and we added a new quality condition and now select the top five spinoffs. So, you know, you have a list of spinoffs. You filter for these two criteria, maybe even more criteria. Uh, and then you sort by the highest trailing 12-month ROIC uh, and pick those top five. And, of course, return on invested capital is uh, one of the preferred metrics that Joel Greenblatt uses for Kind of determining whether a business is good, quality businesses. So then you can see the, uh, the constituents in terms of the clones, who they're cloning, and then the spinoffs. Um, so that kind of covers those. And then I just want to look at the performance of the Uber Cannibals, because uh, the Cannibals comes out at a different time than the clones and the uh, spinoffs, they come out in April. Um, so the Uber Cannibals, now this, so he, he talks about how this particular basket has performed since inception. Uh, you can see from 2018, the beginning of 2018 to the end, well, to, to March 30th of 2020, uh, the what is this? The Uber Cannibal basket was down 9.4% uh, versus the S&P 500, which was up 25%. So that's, you know, that's, that's a little concerning, guys. Um, again, it, it's not a very long time frame, but uh, it's, it's a little concerning. Um, and then it talks about, you know, the one year returns, which were really tough for uh, 2019 to 2020 for these cannibal stocks. Uh, and the cannibal methodology was also tweaked. So check this out. Uh, insurance companies are now allowed into the Uber cannibal. Um, 
portion of the portfolio. We no longer have a price to sales ratio or share buyback over dividend yield as a screening condition. A new quality condition. So this is, you know, similar um, to the spinoffs. Highest five-year average return on invested capital. So a little bit different. The uh, spinoffs was a trailing 12 months return on invested capital. Uh, and then existing cannibals that have shown consistent commitment to buybacks get a preference over, you know, potential new entrants into the Uber cannibal basket. Uh, and then you see these are the, the five picks for the cannibals in 2020. So, you know, it, it's, it's a little concerning when, you know, at the beginning, right, the beginning 2018, the start of 2018, you've got this approach where it's like, okay, this is a long-term approach. We've got the methodology and we're going to let it ride. And then after two years, you know, the methodology is being tweaked. Okay. Um, I'm curious why, I'm curious how he determined to make these tweaks to the methodology. Is it back tests over the last five years? Is it back tests from 2000? You know, how, how are these decisions being made? I'm, I'm very curious about that. Also, you know, we have a good sense for who the shameless cloner managers are, who the managers are that are where these ideas are being cloned from. Uh, I don't have a sense of how the cannibals are being selected uh, or how the spinoffs are being selected. So if you look at these five spinoff choices from 2020, um, you know, I don't know of many spinoff resources yet. I just started kind of getting into that. But a quick search pulled off this website, stockspinoffs.com. And you can look at recent spinoffs uh, and the dates that they were spun off. And, you know, for 2019, the spinoffs that I see here, none of them overlapped with the spinoffs that Pabrai chose. So, you know, I'm very curious. Uh, I'd like to know from you guys if you know a great source for, for finding uh, spinoffs and finding information about them, maybe a screener. Uh, I'd love to particularly find spinoffs that have a high percentage of insider holding. I think that's uh, one of the stronger uh, filters that can be applied to the spinoff arena to find uh, opportunities that are going to outperform the market. Uh, so curious to hear from you guys, how are you finding companies that are doing massive buybacks and how are you finding spinoffs uh, and kind of digging into to that data? Curious to hear from you on that. But, you know, here it is, guys exciting back test results not so exciting uh tests in reality over the last couple of years it is true it's a very short time to be gauging long-term performance on an approach like this um but with something new like this something that's never really been done before it it's it can be really hard to get behind the approach when the first couple of years uh, really aren't aren't showing very good performance. Um, so that's that's what we've got on the free lunch portfolio. Wish I had better news for you around that. Uh, but I'm curious to hear from you as well. What do you think of the free lunch portfolio? Uh, I know Pabrai is is setting up a fund specifically uh, that's designed around these three baskets: cannibals, clones, and spinoffs. So um, hopefully over time, this, he starts to refine this approach um, and we get better performance than what we've seen over the last couple of years. But, uh, you know, all of that remains to be seen. So, yeah, just wanted to cover Monish Pabrai's free lunch portfolio. Hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you in the next video. Take care.